there are some very distinct experiences for Pacific Islander students that Asian American students and families don't go through. So for a lot of Asian American students and families, you know, I mean, the stereotypes, I mean, there's some, there's definitely some truth to it. I think there's a lot of families who feel like, you know, what is most important in picking a school is what's the name brand of the school? You know, is it Harvard? Is it Yale? Is it Princeton? Is it Harvard? I mean, Stanford, you know, without really taking into account, like, is this the best school for students? You know, and, and what happens, and I do apologize for the noise in the background, um, but, you know, what does happen is that students go, but, you know, um, it, it, it's, it's a hard time, you know, students are just, they're really just starting to come into their own. They don't know, you know, what to think a lot of times, or if they do, you know, even if they have opinions on it, you know, sometimes their parents, you know, have very distinct opinions about what should be done. I think there's one of two things that happen that I see. One, they either stay close to home, so their parents, you know, want them to go to like, if they're in California, they want them to go to like the UC because then they can stay close to home. Um, or they want them to go to that big name brand school that everybody recognizes and that they could um, brag about to their friends. I mean, and it's interesting, especially in Asian families, you know, you could be the, um, you know, you could be the, the, the most resource strapped family where, um, you know, you could be coming from a refugee family, but, um, you know, um, I will tell you that the Asian parents, they want more for their kids and they're, they're aspiring for their kids to go to these like big schools because they feel like this is the ticket to a better future for them. But as been, you know, as has been shared, you know, Dr. McGee talked about some of the kind of isolation and some of the other kind of issues that students who, who end up in a place where they don't feel like it honors them, it allows them to be they, who they are, um, you know, they'll muddle through, but I don't think that they really thrive. And I've seen too many examples working with adults later on where they end up in a, in a field, in a, in a profession where they are not at their best and they end up changing careers. And it's, it, it, it's almost like, it's such a shame because it's, it's, it's such a, um, you know, it, it, it's not really, um, it, it adds to the mental stress, I think, that happens when people feel like they're letting their families down when they either change jobs or they don't do what their parents had aspired for them, or if they don't even go to the right school. But I've also seen what happens when students go to the right place, they get the support that they need. Um, I spoke about Pacific Islander students, and for a lot of Pacific Islander students, I think they come from families where, you know, the kind of... of um, the rigor and um, the cultural supports that's needed to help ensure that Pacific Islander students can be their most successful, oftentimes because of the AAPI kind of moniker or the, the term that's used, um, you know, that, that combines the two different um, communities. What happens is that you have Pacific Islander students who are in a sense erased because their experiences, their cultural needs um, are not taken into account. And so what does happen is that a lot of these students do struggle. They, um, they suffer from, you know, some of the kind of mental health issues that come when, you know, you're made to feel like you don't fit in or you're treated like, hey, why can't you be like those other students? You know, you're AAPI. So they expect that you're going to be like the really smart Asian students. And then the really smart Asian students, what if you're not a really smart Asian student? And so, you know, the pressures that come about when you don't live up to what the stereotypes are. And so I think, you know, these are kind of, um, for counselors, I think this is the, the kind of mindsets and, and understanding that they need to understand so that they can help families navigate, you know, the college decision-making. So